Hello, my name is Evan Sadoff and I'm here to review the 1997 Taco Bell Star Wars Special Edition line of toys. These toys, they're not like other toys that you get normally with Happy Meals and whatnot, which are usually just useless hunks of plastic. These are special. I went on eBay and I, I bought them all for like $12, which is hilarious because somebody in 1997 bought them all, thought they were going to make $1,000 if I just hold on to them long enough, and then I bought them for 12 They show up at my house, they're still in their wrapping, like they hadn't even been opened yet. They've been sitting there that long. First one is R2-D2. Uh, this is basically just your regular plastic toy, right? But befitting of this line, there's a secret, there's something to it. R2-D2 opens up and reveals that there is, uh, Princess Leia is inside. She's smaller than him, so the scale is a little off, but I don't know, it's still kind of cool. It's two toys for the price of one. And um, I don't even remember what the price of one was. Probably like $1.50 or something. Anyway, a new hope Princess Leia coming out of R2-D2. Um, if you want to think about it really hard, there's probably like some kind of thematic thing you could write a term paper on. And now for toy number two, Yoda. Now earlier I was talking about how these aren't just hunks of plastic. This one is literally just a hunk of plastic. But all these are made for kids three and up. This is the one that's made for babies to suck on. But think about that. Coming from a fast food restaurant, the craftsmanship here is incredible. Yoda looks amazing and is hard as a rock. So what you have here is a toy that can't really be choked on uh, because it's for babies, but it's actually really nice to look at. And I think that in and of itself speaks to the higher quality of this line in total. Plus, if you're a kid and you chuck this at your brother's head, it's gonna leave a mark because this is solid. I just appreciate the craftsmanship of it. I think it's kind of beautiful and surprises me that this came uh, from Taco Bell at the time. All right, toy number three is what I call the story cube. This isn't a toy that you exactly play with. It's not a figure, but you know, it's kind of like one of those um, educational toys you find in people's houses where they're not allowed to have televisions. Uh, it's a cube attached by a series of stickers and the stickers show you Star Wars stuff. Uh, you got Luke, here you got Obi-Wan, Darth Vader, but the trick is that it starts to fold outward and now we have the Wampa, uh, and I believe this is a shot that was of the Wampa that was added, so this is a special edition treat. Once you, st once you start making it go long ways, you just start playing with it like this and folding it all kinds of different ways, and each one it reveals a new image. Here's the fleet uh, from Return of the Jedi. And uh, if you're really nostalgic, here's probably our, our first real look at that Jabba the Hutt scene we were all so excited about. Uh, you know, we should have known. We had a picture to look at. I mean, it's fun to look at. It takes a little work to make sure you see every image. But really what you're doing is after a while, it's just like relaxing and playing with it like this. You're not even looking at it anymore. But it, it is kind of satisfying just to do this with your hands for a while. I don't know. They didn't have to go through all this effort. It is also the only one that really says anything about the special edition. So it's worth a little bit more because of that. The next toy is action packed. It's the Death Star. This is what it does. It's got this plunger right here and you push it and it spins spins like this and you can make it go faster and faster and faster like one of those teacup rides that you ride as a kid that you turn and you're in charge of so therefore you're in charge of your own safety. That's what this reminds me of. You can plunge it as fast as you want and it spins. Now when it spins the Death Star it opens up you know like the leaves of a flower and inside is sort of like a green or uh, well I'm colorblind so I don't know what color it is but a globe that's greenish to me. Uh, is revealed and then there is a spinning thing that emits sparks if it weren't broken but it broke and so what I'm saying there is this is a toy that has a function you're in charge of that gives you three things this spins this opens and there's a slight fire element to you know in your five-year-old brain make you feel like you're watching the Death Star explode I think for a toy that you get from Taco Bell that has this many moving elements 
I, I just think that's the coolest, the coolest thing. Okay, the next toy is Bespin, Cloud City. This is where the toys start getting more scientific uh, and impressive, if you ask me. All it really is is a standee and, you know, Cloud City itself, right? There's, it's not that impressive, but the thing is that it's, there's a magnet right here and there's a magnet here so it seems to float and I just think that's the greatest thing. It teaches kids slow movements. Calm down a little bit while you're playing because if you don't you're gonna easily knock it off. That's what happens. Would I say this is scientifically accurate to the real? No, I wouldn't because I, I believe that they had electricity, running water, plumbing, not to mention just a huge ver vertical tunnel for handless gentlemen to fall down. It's also missing those funky satellites that Luke hangs from at the bottom. I think this is a very zen toy. I like that in playing with it, kids learn a lesson about calming down. Okay, so the last toy was all about relaxing and calming down. This next toy is the opposite. We have the Millennium Falcon. Now, all kids from my generation know this little thing indicates something cool is going to happen and this is no exception. All of this does is it sits on this pedestal and you pull this and it rattles like crazy. It just makes noise and rocks around your table not done yet. <laughs> Something in there that weighs, that has a little weight to it, you pull the pin and it spins around and all it does, it's not fancy, it just makes the toy rattle. But I think that's the most brilliant thing because uh, in Star Wars, we all love the Millennium Falcon, but it is introduced to us as a fast ship, but a hunk of junk. And this makes the toy feel appropriately like a 1992 Ford Taurus that someone just won't let go of. Look at it go. And finally, the most impressive toy of the bunch. The toy that I think took just the most imagination is my good friend, Boba Fett. Now, probably looks a little underwhelming, all it really is is Boba Fett with his arms out like Superman. Boba Fett is flying over the Sarlacc pit. Uh, he looks triumphant even though I think we all know this is like his last moment on, Earth, uh, on Tatooine. <laughs> Not on Earth. Uh, he's, about, he's, he's about to die. I appreciate that part of the toy. I also think that the base being the Sarlacc means it's really two toys. But what's really going on here is there is a weight in Boba Fett's hands and chin so that he is just resting on a point. I think that's the most brilliant thing in the world. Boba Fett is flying, but he's only contacting the toy on one little tiny piece of his chin. And also, I think to make room for the weights, his hands are very big and his feet are very small. But that's brilliant too because it's, a, it's like a forced perspective thing. Boba Fett's flying right at you. It's science, but it's also necessity. Now, you just gotta think for a second and in, encompassing like the whole line, the amount of thought that went into this. This is not your normal taco toy. All kinds of uh, science goes into the idea of, well, we'll play with weights and it's gonna make it look like it's flying. Play with magnets, make it look like Bespin is floating in midair. We're gonna play with sparks and let kids feel like they're blowing up the Death Star. We're gonna throw rocks in the Millennium Falcon and make them feel like they have a car that barely runs. I just think it's the most impressive toy line I've ever come across. Whatever you wanna say about the special editions, and uh, they're literally still controversial. I don't think there's any argument about these toys being great. If you want to throw Yoda at your brother's head, or you want to just like do a little Rubik's Cube thing all night long, go for it. It's the greatest toy line ever. <laughs>